in our uh, Unity Point Health segment today. Dr. Don uh, Hillebrand, Dr. Hillebrand, your, your specialty is liver. Correct. And uh, we think of a lot of different kinds of diseases, but I know you have a very special message today you want to make sure that everyone knows about. Okay, Terry, I just want to say thanks for having me this morning. Yeah. And the reason I'm here is I really want to get the word out to all of Iowans that there's an underappreciated disease out there, and that's hepatitis C. Uh, if you look at all the statistics that are out there, it's estimated that half of those individuals that are infected with hepatitis C don't even know that they're infected. So if you do the math with the three and a half million uh, Americans that are infected, that's a lot of individuals that haven't been diagnosed. And without getting diagnosed, you can't get referred to a specialist and get, have access to the life-saving cures that are out there today. Now, I feel like you hear about hepatitis A, B, and C, but what exactly is it? Well, hepatitis C has been around for quite a while. It was officially diagnosed or named back in the late 80s. We've been able to do a blood test for it since the early 90s, been able to screen the blood supply. But it's a virus that's transmitted by blood and body fluid contacts. So historically, we've screened based on risk factors. Um, blood transfusion before 1992, transplants before then, IV drug use, illicit drug use, uh, high-risk sexual behavior, those types of things. And that's how we've gone out and looked for the disease. Unfortunately, we found that that's not very effective. As I'd mentioned, half of those individuals that are infected don't even know that they're um, infected. So what does it do to the body? Like, or how would we, obviously many people don't know they have it, so mm -hmm. it, there's some symptoms you don't recognize, is, but what does it do to the it body? It is truly a silent assassin. It sneaks up on people. Majority of individuals don't know that they're infected. They don't have symptoms, or the symptoms are quite mild. They may be something as insidious as fatigue, and who of us isn't fatigued these days? Right. You know, right. We sleep. are on a regular basis. Yeah. Maybe we need to go get tested. Yeah. Too, uh, mu too much, too little coffee. I mean, you can always come up with a reason right. why you're tired. And so it sneaks up on people until they develop advanced liver disease. But, but is that basically what it is? Is hepatitis C is, is a liver disease? It's a liver disease, but it does have effects outside the liver. It causes progressive damage, and it's estimated that up to half of those individuals that are infected will go on to develop cirrhosis of the liver. So I, I go get my physical each year at Unity Point, and, mm -hmm. and they take blood and, and they check different things. Would that have an automatic hep C check? No, and it turns out that up to a third of individuals with hepatitis C may have a normal liver panel. Hmm. So the blood test that we really? typically used to monitor liver injury, liver function, those can be falsely negative. So you have to specifically do an antibody test for the virus. And now there's new um, suggestions out, recommendations out by the Center for Disease Control, United States Preventive Services Task Force, and endorsed by the American Association for the Study of Liver Disease, that all baby boomers, those individuals such as myself, born between 1945 and 1965, should have a once in a lifetime test for hepatitis C. That antibody test, if it's positive, can confirm whether it's ongoing infection or whether you may have had the infection in the remote past and cleared it. If you're infected, you can then get access to a specialist and have the opportunity to undergo treatment. Now, I might be a little shy to say to my doc when I go in, hey, I'd like to have a hep C check next time I do my physical, but I should do that. Well, and that's where the beauty of the birth cohort screening comes into play. It doesn't take into account any risky behaviors, any things you did back in the day. It's purely based on you know when you were born. So it takes all that heat off. And I think that's one of the problems that we had with the risk factor screening. Mm -hmm. and what's involved with the hep C screening? Is it just as simple as drawing some blood, or what, what is it It's entail? a simple blood test. Okay. And they actually have tests now that you can do with finger sticks. You can do it with buccal mucosa swabs. There's a number of different ways to do the antibody test. Uh, once that test is positive, you have to have a reflex test looking specifically for the virus. Up to 25 to 30 percent of individuals who are exposed to hepatitis C, they may clear the infection within the first six months, huh. but they'll carry that antibody for the rest of their life, uh -huh. showing that they've seen the virus. So just having the antibody being positive doesn't mean you have hep C, but it means that you've seen it. I'm, I'm surprised that I guess I didn't realize you could, in some cases, clear it, that you could. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we've learned with the improvement in, in the testing methodology that we've had over the past several decades. So there are treatments available in case you get the diagnosis that you do have. There are very good treatments. Before 2011, the treatments that we had available were not very effective. We cured maybe half the individuals we treated. And in the process of curing them, we made a lot of people sick, lots of side effects, toxicities. Now with the advent of the direct acting antiviral agents, or DAAs, we now have pills that we can give people to offer cure rates above 90 to 95%. Oh, that's wonderful. That are much better tolerated, few side effects, and the dropout rate because of side effects or toxicity uh, the treatment is under one or two percent so let's go back to if now the people have heard about it uh, they obviously need to have a check mm -hmm. if you're a baby boomer 
do you encourage them to call today, to call your office today, to, or the next time they do a test, or what would be the best? Well, I think this step? is a discussion that would be uh, very good for them to have with their pr primary care provider. Uh, the next time they're going in for an appointment or to make an appointment, let them know that they fall in that baby boomer birth cohort and they'd like to have their once in a lifetime antibody screening test. Say those ages again. Uh, born between the, the years 1945 and 1965. Okay. Is there a reason why that particular set of years? Uh, well, it has to do with when the virus um, came upon the scene I see. and before the HIV epidemic we started taking better control of IV drug use and be able to uh, screen our blood supply. Since approximately 1992 we've been able to screen the blood supply so the rate of uh, acquisition of hep C via that route has dropped off dramatically. Okay. Unfortunately, in recent years, our young adults, late teens and early 20s, we're seeing an upswing in new cases of hepatitis C because of IV drug use. Okay. Uh -huh. gotcha. Do they ever check on blood banks if you're donating blood? Oh, definitely. You know, whenever you donate blood, they screen you for a host of things. So they would tell you that would be, so if you've had your blood, if you give blood, that you would probably automatically have been checked? Yep, definitely. Okay, and okay. they will tell you if you have a problem. Yes, they will. Okay. All right, well, so the important too. message uh, today, folks, if you're a baby booner, make sure you ask for that hep C uh, screening. So make sure you talk to your uh, personal care provider. Otherwise, Unity Point always has great information for us as well. Doctor, thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank you for having great me. Great information. Thank really you. appreciate it.